Yeah, welcome to Easy Mathematics and a new video. Today, we want to calculate the volume of a toothpaste tube. And this is how we will start. So first we discuss the shape of a toothpaste tube. Yeah, then we make a couple of assumptions for the calculations. And then we will see that we can assume straight line segments on the boundary and this leads to a specific equation for the cross sections. So we will understand this in a couple of minutes. Then we are ready to calculate the volume. Yeah, and in the most cases, as usual, at the end I have a small task. So let's start. Yeah, the shape of a toothpaste tube. I have a picture here. Um, it's not my picture. The reference is in the video description. So, yeah, how do we get a toothpaste tube? We start with a cylinder, and, and the cylinder at one end we yeah we press one end together to get a straight line like here okay and now we assume here in white you can see it we assume straight lines so each point on on the bottom circle corresponds to yeah, to one point on the straight line. We will discuss this in a couple of minutes. Yeah, and, and you see here also in the picture, yeah, it seems that the cross sections we get ellipses. And this is what we want to talk about. And if we, if we have done this, and if we have the equation of such a tube, then we can calculate its volume. All right. So, our first assumption is we try to find, uh, um, so our goal is we try to find the maximum volume. So, we do not care about the thickness of the tube. So, if we work with the exterior radius, we are good to go. Alright? And we will see, like mentioned, by the shape of the tube, we can assume elliptic areas. Yeah, uh, so the cross sections and we will prove this in a couple of minutes and what you should know about to understand this video you should know about the parameter form of a line and of a circle and ellipses and you should know about Cavalieri's principle so I will not talk about this stuff in detail okay so make sure you understand these three points yeah and now we can start Straight line segments on the boundary. So again, I have here a picture. What uh, we want to to do? Yeah, we assume here straight lines on the boundary, and also from the from the other side. And we want to find uh, the major radius of our ellipse and the minor radius of an ellipse and then we will prove that this is an ellipse okay yeah and for the boundary for the picture so here uh, upwards this is our x line now for x zero we get a of zero equals b of zero is r so this is the radius r and our tube has um, height h we get a of h is pi over 2r and b of h is 0. Yeah, so this we can see by the picture. And now we assume this linear behavior. So we get if a equals uh, a of 0 is r and a of h is pi over 2 times r and this should be a linear behavior. We find r plus pi over 2 minus 1 over h times x times r or 
if we factor out r, we find this expression. And also for e of x, we find this expression. Yeah, so it's a good idea to stop the video in this moment and think about these two equations. Yeah, and like I said, it seems that the cross sections are ellipses. Yeah, we can see this in this picture here again. And now we will prove this. If you like, you can stop the video again and try to prove it by yourself. Yeah, the equation of the cross sections. I want to remind you the parameter form of an ellipse has the form a times the cosine of pi and b times sine of pi, where pi runs from 0 up to 2 pi. And if you look at the at the bottom circle, so the red line is the x-axis, the green line the y-axis, and the blue line uh, is the z-axis. The bottom circle, if our tube has h in height h, we get c of phi is r times h over r cosine phi sine phi. And each point of the circumference here, uh, it corresponds like the white lines uh, already um, shows it, and it corresponds to a to a point on on the bottom straight line. And I leave that as an exercise for you to make sure you get this. So if if I call the line uh, G we find p of phi is r times pi times 0 cosine phi 0 and also phi runs from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? And now we determine for each phi the line segment s. In the picture these are the white lines and we does it for every phi. Okay? So we determine for every phi this white line. Yeah, and how can we do this? This is the parameter form of, of the line. Yeah, we start at the circle and then we add the, the direction vector g of phi minus c of phi and then we multiply that by lambda and lambda runs from 0 to 1. So for 0 we are at the circle. And if we run up to 1, we get to the straight line. Okay, this is the parameter form of a line segment. Now we plug in all the values we have. Yeah, so c of phi is this expression. g of phi is this expression. So we plug in all the stuff. So lambda runs from 0 up to 1 and phi runs from 0 up to 2 pi. Now we write this in following form. It's a small exercise for you, it's not difficult. We get this expression. And the important point is that we have here this a times cosine phi and b times sine phi. And here is yeah, some constant if we fix lambda. So for each lambda, we have indeed an ellipse in the yz plane. And to be more concrete, now uh, we get the ellipses if lambda is between 0 and 1 excluded. Now yeah, for lambda 0 we have the circle, the bottom circle, and for lambda 1 we have the straight line. And all values between 0 and 1 we have indeed these ellipses. What a nice calculation in my opinion. And now we are ready to calculate the volume of the tube. And yeah, we start with the principle of Cavalieri. And this allows us to write the volume as an integral from 
0 up to h pi times major axis times minor axis dx. Okay, and if you remember, uh, the, these two axes, they had uh, this expression. So we factor out uh, the one r of each factor to get the r square, the pi we write in front of the integral. And now up uh, from here, it's a very basic calculation. I'll leave this also the details for you. We find pi times pi plus 4 over 12 r squared and times h. All right. And now we can also uh, take care of the grommet. So if you look at your toothpaste tube, there is a small, in most cases, cylindric shape where there is a small mass of the paste. Yeah, and in the most cases, yeah, it's like a cylinder with radius at most r, of course it's smaller, and for simplification we assume that the, that the height of this cylinder is also r, so at most we have pi times r cubed for the grommet, so in total at most um, at most uh, the volume of the tube plus the volume of the grommet, and I had a look at my data. I have a radius of 3.5 centimeters and a height of 13.8 centimeters. This makes um, for the tube nearly 80, 80 uh, milliliters. And yeah, now my Bromet is missing. Uh, yeah, but it's not a big deal. Um, you can check your values by yourself and write it down in the comments. What do you get? What do you get? Uh, yeah, have fun with this. And the last point is, like I said, a small um, challenge. Yeah, uh, so a task. Uh, determine an expression free of parameters, so like an expression z equals a function of x and y for our tube and calculate its volume via a double integral. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Have fun with it. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye bye.